This is Movies for the Blind, episode 205, The Dentist. This won't hurt you much. Hello and welcome to Movies for the Blind, where you can enjoy films without looking at a screen. I'm Valerie Hunter. For years, and maybe still, whenever someone wanted to conjure up a vibe of old-time Hollywood, they'd come up with the images of three people, Charlie Chaplin, Mae West, and W.C. Fields. Fields would usually be in some ill-fitting suit, beat-up, top hat askew, bulbous nose, usually playing a gambler or a con man with a love of liquor and vehement dislike of children, dogs, and women. He went from vaudeville to silent films, then easily made the transition to talkies with his unmistakable, often imitated voice. Shortly before he became a full-fledged star in films like My Little Chickadee and Never Give a Sucker an Even Break, he starred in some shorts with comedy legend Max Sennett. This is one of them, where he plays a contemporary man, but with his typical bad attitude and love-hate relationship with the game of golf. By the way, if you're in any way sensitive about dentist sort of things, you might want to shy away from the second half of this. From 1932, this is The Dentist. A Paramount Release. A Max Sennett star comedy. A bulldog barks from a doghouse opening. The Dentist, directed by Leslie Pierce. Featuring W.C. Fields, with Babe Kane, Arnold Gray, Dorothy Granger, Elise Cavana, Zedna Farley. At a breakfast table. Where are my glasses? They're on your head. An older man finds them as a young woman crosses the room. Where's the newspaper? You're sitting on it. She leaves, and he pulls the paper out from under himself. Then unfolds it. He reads. Land of Goshen, another baby. He folds it. Up to Mary, my He steps to the kitchen, hey. where the young woman is bent over at the icebox. Uh, With the back of his hand, he pats her behind. Uh, fifty pounds and chop it fine. She straightens up. This is Uncle Buck. What do you mean, fifty pounds and chop it fine? Oh, I thought you were Arthur. Who's Arthur? He's the man I intend to marry. Oh, well, don't tell me anything about it. I'm only your father. I can read in the newspaper. What does he do for a living? Well, he's the ice man. An ice man? Yeah, he goes to college. He's a Cornell man. Red Grange was an ice man. He's still an ice man. A young man hauls in a big block of ice. Put it down there and get out. With his tongs, he pulls it off his back and onto the floor. Okay. Politely, he walks out. Go. And the man shuts the back door. Now you're so smart, how are you going to get it in the ice box? I'll put it in myself. She stomps her foot and storms out. Don't ever do it. He stomps his own foot. Back to me. Tossing down the paper, he puts his glasses in his trouser pocket. He bends down to lift the ice block. And finally gets his arms around it to stand. He turns to the ice box, which goes up to his shoulders, and strains to lift the block to the top. But the top door falls shut before he does. He turns toward a phone by the back door and struggles to carry the ice across the kitchen. Setting the block on the stove, he answers the phone. Hello, hello, hello. The ice starts melting. Guys, come in. Oh, hello, Frobisher. I've been waiting for you. Frobisher calls from a golf course clubhouse. I'll meet you on the first tee. Hurry up, old. Okay, Charlie, okay. I'll be over in a half a deck. Okay, all right. He hangs up with the ice now quarter the size. So he puts it in one hand and takes it to the icebox, where he opens the top door and tosses it in. Did you put the ice in the icebox? He munches celery. How'd you do it? Well, easy. Where's my golf club? In your golf bag. Yeah, but where's the golf bag? You just fell over it. Yeah, I'd say that. He picks it up and pulls out a club that's bent in a curve. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Tossing it aside. He pulls out one broken so the head swings around loose. He tosses that and picks up the bag. He carries it into a dentist's office. What's my first appointment this morning? Miss Pipitone at 10.30. Well, I just have time. The daughter stands at the icebox. Where's my cat? 
You never wear any. Oh, yeah, that's right. Where's the ice? In the ice box. There's just a little piece left. Now I'll have to get some more. Yeah, keep that ice man out of here. I'm going to order a fresh air. He walks out. Soon after on the golf course, smoking a cigar, the dentist kicks through some leaves and picks up a ball. Well, that's mine. Dropping it. He steps toward an elderly woman on a bench. Well, we can't look for it all day. Been out of 20 minutes now, and I gotta get back to the office half past 10. I'm gonna drop another ball. Okay, drop another. If it isn't unfair to either of you gentlemen, I can tell you where the ball is. Where? Under that leaf. He bends down and takes the leaf from the ball. Thanks. He turns to Frobisher. If it isn't unfair to either one of us, we've been looking for the ball 20 minutes. He turns toward a group on the green. Four! I'd wait a minute. They're still on the green. Well, let them get out of the way. Addressing the ball, he swings. On the green. This is certainly a great game for your health. The ball hits the man, who falls over on his face. His partner tries to lift him up as the dentist and Frobisher arrive with their caddies. The dentist finds a ball beside the stricken man's leg, but the partner motions it's not his. Searching the green, the dentist spots an uncovered sprinkler hole just off it. He looks inside, bends down, and picks out the ball. He pulls out a card from his pocket. A ball lying in a sprinkler connection may be dropped without penalty, no nearer the hole. Putting the card away, he turns away from the proper hole, then glances back. The other pair's caddies gather around the stricken man, take him by his legs and drag him away. Get those teeth out of there, too. They're right in my line. As the partner gets the false teeth, the dentist turns again and drops the ball over his shoulder. It rolls across the green and into the hole. He picks it out. Two. You can't do that. What do you mean I can't do it? Read the card. You had drops in the wall. What? Don't. You, you had two. Don't quibble. Don't quibble. Don't. Quibble, don't. They go to the next hole, whose green is in the middle of a lake. Snappy little hole, don't you think so? Yes, it is. Give me the Marshy Niblet. He puts the ball on the tee. Marshy Niblet. Oh. He accepts right. a club from his caddy. Four. A man on the green holds the flag. Four. He puts it in the hole. What are they doing? Having a basket party over there? The man steps into a boat with other players, and they row away as the dentist addresses the ball. He swings. The ball makes it onto the green, but it rolls into the water. He turns to the caddy. Don't stand there! Stand over here! The caddy walks away behind the dentist. He gets out another ball and puts it on the tee. me off. He addresses the ball and swings. This time, it goes straight into the water. All the again. He turns to the caddy again. Don't stand behind me when I'm shooting. The caddy steps to where he was before. You told me to stand over there, sir. Never mind where I told you to stand. You stand where I tell you. He turns to Frobisher. That kid's a dummy. Doesn't know what time it is. Say, by the way, what time is it? I don't know. 10.15. Shut up, will you? He tees up another ball. Now stand clear and keep your eye on the ball. He swings again. They watch. And it falls into the water again. With a bigger swing, he hurls the club into the lake. Oh, wait, you can't do that. What do you mean I can't do that? He throws his golf bag into the lake. I can do anything I want to do. He throws the caddy into the lake. <laughs> then stalks away. Take this golf course. Later in the dentist's office. Hello, Joe. Hi, Doc. How about a little golf? Uh, I just threw my clubs away. <laughs> what, again? Hey, the funniest thing happened. I'm taking my second stroke. I beat an old geezer on the sconce with my ball. Right near the green was headed for the pin. The ball rolls back into a water connection. I pick it up, drop it over my shoulder. It dribbles down into the hole. I'm down in two. Well, uh... What do you mean, well? They gave me the same argument. I'm down in two. Look at the back of the car. They wanted me to do it over again after I had a fine drop. I right, so well, I... <laughs> he turns to a sink. Then to his assistant. Where's the soap? 
It's in your hands. Huh? It is. Oh. A woman enters the waiting room holding her jaw. She crosses to the office doorway. Oh! She paces back across to a sofa. How about tomorrow, Doc? Well, what time? Oh, about. No, I won't be able to go. Gets a rifle. I'm going duck shooting. Well, I'll run along. And I say, boy, you should have been there. I took this mashing nibbling. I picked the straight shot for the pen. The assistant heads for the waiting room. This old geezer. Down into the water connection. She returns and gets his attention. What the hell with her? She goes back out. Drops into the water connection. I pick it up and drop it over my shoulder and down into the hole it goes. Well, I'll give you a ring tomorrow, Doc. Okay. Joe leaves. Well, they burn up. He got a fried eggs on the back of his neck. He's startled. Send her in. She walks in the patient, who wears a veiled hat and a long black dress. How you doing? Will you sit down? Put it in here, please. She sits in the dentist chair. You won't hurt my leg, will you? She pulls her skirt up to below her knee. My doctor says I have a very bad leg. Your doctor is off his nut. She lowers it again. I don't believe in doctors anyway. There's a doctor who lives right down the street here. Treated a man for yellow jaundice for nine years. Then found out he was a chap. You know, a little dog bit me. She stands and bends over. He bit me right here. Pointing to her heel, but with her behind to the dentist. This dash hound. Oh, yeah. a little tiny dog. Mm-hmm. And he sneaked right up behind me and bit me right like that. You're rather fortunate it wasn't a Newfoundland dog that bit you. Can you sit down? She does. Shall I use gas? Well, gas or electric light. I'd feel nervous to have you fool around me in the dark. (laughs) He steps around behind her. While in the waiting room, a man with his jaw wrapped in a bandage arrives, hanging up his hat. He picks up a magazine from a table and sits in a chair. In the office, when the dentist leans toward the patient with an instrument, the man in the waiting room raises his head. Outside, a workman uses a drill. Slowly, the man in the waiting room stands and puts the magazine back on the table. Then gets his hat, puts it on, and leaves. The dentist can't even get close to her mouth. He pulls away to find her hand in his pocket, taking it out. He pulls out a roll of cash and puts it in another pocket. (coughs) Come on, come on now. I'll try not to be so cruel this time. Come on, come on. Oh, doctor, I can't let you do that again. Mm. She gets out of the chair and walks out. While a tall woman enters the waiting room with a long face and long dress, short cape and hat. The dentist peeks around the corner at her. Tell her I'm out. But doctor, she has a three o'clock appointment. I wouldn't care if she had a four o'clock appointment. She enters behind him as he holds up his rifle. Why, when I was in Darjeeling, oh, it was tigers. The assistant secretly points back to her. Tell her I'm out. Don't go on out there and tell her I'm out. She tries signaling again. And he turns. Not it now. Hi now. He puts the rifle down. We've been waiting for you. (laughs) With a haughty expression. She steps to the chair and sits. He steps behind her to the assistant. When I tell you to go out and tell one of these palookas that I'm out, go out and tell them I'm out. Don't have these buzzards walk in on me. I when I don't want to. The assistant out. signals she hears him. He notices and the patient turns away. She's turning, listening again. So he stomps on a chair pedal, jerking her up. Then does it some more. Taking out a mirror instrument, he steps beside her. Then on a down pedal. She gets out of the chair. You just come in for the ride? He ushers her back to the chair, and she sits. Haven't I seen your face somewhere before? Oh, probably you've seen me at the horse show. Jockey? Sir? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Can you open your mouth? She does, barely. Uh, come on now. you got a bigger mouth than that opener. She opens it wider so he can look with his mirror. Hmm. Oh, beautiful. Hmm. He turns to the assistant. 
Hand me that uh, 404 circular buzzsaw, will you? She hands him a dentist's drill, which he examines. Dropping, 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 dropping. Is that a 404 conical you can me? She hands him a drill bed. Uh, which he puts on yeah, and advances toward yeah. his patient's mouth. Her legs splay out and her body squirms, sliding down the chair. The legs bend and twist, but the dentist keeps steady. Hey, on, oh, that didn't hurt, did it? Oh. She holds her face. I know it wouldn't hurt you. He hands back the drill. Yeah, give me that packing, please. As he gets a small pallet, the assistant hands him a jar. Thank you. He's scooping up some packing when his daughter walks in. He notices her and gives the packing to the assistant. Put that in there and just stuff it in her mouth. Pardon me for just a moment. He goes to his daughter. You wouldn't let Arthur come here to see me, so I'm going to see him. He blocks her. He turns toward the patient, smiling. Excuse me a moment, folks. Unsmiling, he rushes his daughter to the next room. And upstairs... Opening a door, he forces her into her bedroom. Stay in there. Now, what do you think of that? He shuts the door. And she stomps, jumping hard on the floor. The dentist locks the door, pockets the key, and heads downstairs, where the patient has tubes running from the packing in her mouth. Keep you waiting. She points toward her mouth. You said a mouthful. Uh, open your lips, then just a moment. He examines the packing in the tubes. All your lines busy? Oh, The daughter keeps stomping around her room, while below, the dentist tries to work with the packing removed. He looks up and sees a chandelier jiggling. He shakes his head and returns to work. But cracks form by the chandelier, and plaster starts to fall. The dentist keeps working, but a bit of plaster falls on him. He looks up, smoothing his hair bends down to his patient again. And plaster falls in the patient's mouth. Glancing up, the dentist extracts it. And the patient raises her head. Why, it came out easily, didn't it? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Surprise me. He puts it by the rinse basin. A bigger chunk falls on his head and grimaces. Uh, excuse me, just... Uh... Stepping away, he goes upstairs. Open that door! I can't. You locked me in. Where's the key? In your pocket. Huh? Oh. Huh. He pulls it out huh. and unlocks the door, then bursts in. He pinches her arm, and she drops on her chair. Shh! Shh! I think downstairs. He kicks the chamber pot under the bed on his way out, then goes back to the office, where the patient remains. Any patients? Miss Menke. Huh? He turns to her, oh, wiping his hands with a towel, <coughs> which he puts aside. He pulls out his mirror instrument and examines Menke's mouth again. He puts it away and looks through other instruments on a chest of drawers. Have you ever had this tooth pulled before? No! He stands in front of her. This won't hurt you. Much. Lunging between her legs, he starts pulling at the tooth with forceps. Her legs wrap around him and she pulls herself up off the chair. He steps away, pulling as she hangs on. He takes an armrest she clutches and tosses it, then goes back to work pulling. He struggles to pull her foot from his lab coat pocket as they stay locked together. Then he lowers her to the floor, still hanging on to the tooth. He sits on the foot of the chair and accepts a fan from the assistant. He hands it back, then lifts Menke back up with her legs around him, still pulling. He gets her back on the chair, where she goes limp with her skirt up to her thighs, and he steps away. Oh, I'm going to give her gas. not going to pull me out around the floor. Another chunk of plaster falls on his head. Oh. Dropping the forceps, he runs for the stairs. Relax. Would you like a drink? Mickey turns to the cup she holds out. What is it? Water. No, thanks. Upstairs. Stop. He talks through the door. 
Fish. He goes back downstairs. With the dentist chair is empty. Well, it won't be long now. That female wrestler gone? Yes, she's gone. A short man with a long beard enters the waiting room. The dentist spots him with a start. The man takes off his hat to reveal a bald head and waits. Is he standing in a hole? No, he's just a little fella. Hmm. Send him in, I'll fix him. The assistant goes to him. This way, please. He bows and follows her to the office, where she takes his hat. How do you do? He bows. How's everything up in Moscow? He holds up two fingers. Got two strikes on the boys, eh? Will you sit down? He lowers the chair as the man steps on it and sits. Thank you. The dentist gets his mirror instrument ready and leans down toward the very thick beard. He picks some of it up, looking for an opening, and keeps searching. He straightens up, scratching his head. I can't find his mouth. Hand me that stethoscope, will you? The assistant does. Thanks. Will you say ah, oh, please? He listens. Ah, oh, again? Ah, oh, again? Ah, oh. I almost had it. He runs the stethoscope over the beard. Ah, oh, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. it is. He pulls some beard aside to find an open mouth. And a very pretty thing, too. <laughs> Let me see now. He gives back the stethoscope. Hand me a drill. She does. Thank you. And steps out. Now just open your mouth. He goes in. Can't hurt. Okay. And the man's legs lift and squirm around. He sits up and spits white pieces into the rinse basin. You can't say that hurt you. The dentist goes back in, and the man's legs squirm again. The drill is put away. When birds fly in, the dentist grabs his hunting hat and rifle and shoots toward the hole in the ceiling. He puts the rifle through the beard as the assistant returns. Your daughter is going out with the ice man. Don't be silly. I got her locked in the room. But they're using a ladder. Giving the man the rifle, he hurries outside as they reach the ground. Where do you think you're going? That's him. So oh, you're the guy that hit my pot on the head. Yeah, if you want to make anything out of it. The man slugs him. I'd like to see you do that again. Is it necessary for him to do it again? No. Arthur knocks the man out. Father, you're not really going to buy a Frigidaire, are you? She glances at Arthur. The dentist turns to him. Fifty pounds will make it snappy. He walks away. And his daughter kisses Arthur. The End This described version of The Dentist was produced for Movies for the Blind. Movies for the Blind